All right, well, hello everybody. Happy Sunday and uh, happy Turkey Weekend to all of our Canadian friends and uh, upcoming Turkey Weekend, I guess, next month for our American friends. Uh, apologize for the lighting, but this is all about to change in today's video anyway. Welcome back down into my dungeon garden and aquaponic experiment. I am, well, as always, still in the middle of doing about 150 billion different things and getting none of them done because I've got so many things on the go. So I thought I'd bring you along with me yet again while we, uh, well, kind of tinker with things and just get her ready for the winter garden, I guess. Um, on that note, too, before we get too far into the video, <clears throat> excuse me, it occurred to me making that uh, last aquaponic video that... I got a lot of new viewers since I was really deeply into the aquaponic gardening. So if any of you have uh, individual or very specific questions about aquaponics, let me know down in the comments below and I can try and make videos to uh, explain those. I've got a pretty decent understanding of how this thing works, uh, regardless of how my aquaponic gardens look. That's mostly because of the continued experimentation. As you can hear, my bell siphon is still working 100% uh, of the time for us. So yeah, I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll quickly explore how that looks right now and then we'll get to making some of the rearranges and changes because I gotta move these lights over so they're on top of the garden still and I've got this Darwin table over here that's gotta be moved and yeah, lots of stuff to do so let's get doing it. Now that we've gotten away from that crazy kind of purple light, it's a little easier to see just how the goldfish are doing. They seem to have survived the summer just fine and uh, to be adapting just fine coming back indoors we see most of the black has disappeared from them after being outside but you know was kind of warned about that in the first place I am pleased to see that we've got this one here hopefully that I'm pointing out in the camera is coming up in the camera its markings seem to be a little bit more distinct after being outside and over off on the side there it looks like peaches again more distinct we're starting to see some some white spots coming up so we might get a stepped looking fish there as well now that we've got the more efficient car we'll probably be heading into the city it is an hour drive each way in the winter but we'll probably be heading into the city the city at some point this winter picking up some more feeders i know um, guppies have been suggested because they're fast breeders and a lot of people use tilapia in their gardens because they're an edible fish. This tank is not necessarily good for tilapia because they're jumpers so they'd be out of here in no time at all. Um, if I do something deeper that I can put a net over then well Shocks and I have been discussing it because it is after all another meat source and uh, yeah if I can make this work with, with these goldfish I'm certain I can make it work with decent tilapia. Anyway, it's nice to be able to actually see them. I haven't done any underwater videos in a while. This camera, not that kind of camera, so we won't be doing that with this. However, if that is something you want to see, again, let me know in the comments below and I'll dig out that old uh, Vivitar Faux Pro underwater camera. And hopefully with this better lighting situation, we'll get more natural look at how the fish are doing while the water is nice and clean. Yes. All right, well, conveniently, the pump and timer have just shut off for the next, I believe, half hour is what I've got that set for, so we shouldn't send too many more folks heading towards the loo with these next few clips. Here we can see the parsley. These are the three different kitchen herbs that we had growing in the uh, Euro Garden version of the aquaponics. Parsley is very spindly, like I haven't moved the overhead lights yet, so that's probably not helping. I'm seeing a fair bit of death in the, in some of this, but I suspect most of that is just from being transferred. And once it kind of settles back in and the light is directly overhead instead of kind of off to the side like it is now, we'll see that in a few minutes. Um, I think this is gonna recover just fine. We can see this regular sage plant here. This is just doing quite well. I am gonna trim this down, well, tonight because it's turkey weekend and fresh sage for you know turkey weekend is not a bad thing. One thing I'm finding kind of interesting, and it's probably not showing up well on the camera, is the tricolor sage seems to have bleached itself back into uh, just kind of a regular sage coloring. Now I've noticed in the cold, the purples come out a lot more with this. 
So uh, it could just be that little bit warmer being in the middle of the basement and not up against the cold walls. But uh, we're gonna see if there's a little something I can do to bring the color back out and or if uh, moving the lights directly overhead will help with that because after all these are just shop lights, just fluorescent lights, no fancy LED grows for this particular setup yet. Um, but Mars has been talking to me, so we'll see. I'm done with those purple lights though, tell you what. Anyway, excuse me, that is where things are for now. I brought the strawberry downstairs that Shocks brought in, so we might transplant some of those runners into here. We might put some mint in here, but the first thing we've got to do is move the lights around and get kind of a, well, better situation going for these poor basement plants. We don't even have a tiny little window down here. There is no natural light down here at all. Makes it really hard to know how much time has gone by. You know what, maybe we'll start with this strawberry plant here just so I don't forget, because I have already a few times. I'm just gonna take my knife here and cut the runner off kind of close to the plant, leaving a good chunk of the vine like I would with uh, spider plants. Really have no logical reason that I do that. I just always have, and it uh, seems to help. So there is that. Now in the past, I used to uh, grow strawberries in the aquaponic greenhouse, and things transplanted and rooted up pretty well for me. However, that was in a very nice, very warm valley, and this is a cold, cold Manitoba basement. So, I have some concerns about how well these may or may not take and put on roots for me. However, this strawberry plant that came inside, this is the one that Shocks had. I uh, have pretty much killed off all the other plants that came with this. But anyway, this is the one that she had and it's doing just fantastic. Still got flowers on it. Um, I don't think you can see that though. And believe it or not, well, since it's been hanging out in the house, let's try and get this here for you. We got little strawberries forming on this thing. That one in particular, I find quite interesting. So I don't know if those are gonna ripen down here. Anybody, anybody, have you grown strawberries inside? Can you do it without bees? Is this another one of those situations where I'm gonna need to come along with a paintbrush? Anyway, I'm gonna put this over on the shelves back there. Gonna need to find a better place for that though. All right, well, since we're throwing stuff into the aquaponic garden at the beginning of this, let's just see if we can find some mint to stuff in there as well. It's a safe bet that if I can find a surviving twig here, we'll be good to go. But that mint is looking pretty beat up. Let's see, here we go. Okay, so what I have just off camera here is one of the mints that was sitting in the pond, kind of just doing its own thing. Passive aquaponics, if you will, bogwaponics, whatever you want to call it. Um, the epitome of no power aquaponics. So I've just taken a cutting off of that. And I'm gonna shove that right into my pebbles. And I am very confident that that will root for me, but two is one, one is none. So we're gonna take another cutting and this one's gonna be fun because it's kind of a U shape. So what I'm gonna do is because this is bent here and it looks like it already tried to put some roots out, I'm gonna shove it down like it's two cuttings even though it's really just one. And use that bend to shove it further in. His mint is nice and sturdy. Sturdy plants, gotta like sturdy plants around here. All right, so in theory we've got strawberries in today. And uh, yeah, I'm fairly confident that this mint is gonna be good to go. The rest of the uh, bog style mint 
is going to end up back down in the fish tank but i want to find a couple of bricks to support it on first so for now it's just sitting bog style in a bucket of pond water that's kind of getting a little stanky so i need to get that out of my environment anywho i do have things to do as far as rearranging so i should probably get started on that let's move some lights now because these uh, shop lights are just hanging on chains for the most part i've gotten a couple of screw in hooks i'm going to throw these into my rafters and uh, you'll notice they are two different styles and sizes because i have two different sizes of chain and as much as i'd like to use these larger ones all the way around it doesn't go through the smaller chain so yeah you can throw these in move the lights The insulation on this house may be crap, but those are some good hardwood rafters, I tell you what. Okay, so some fiddling about. We've got the lights a lot closer to the garden now. So that will help make up for the fact that they're not terribly intense lights. Um, I'm not going to say that they're perfectly level up here or perfectly positioned, but I am, for the most part, happy enough with how they are. Now, I just need to figure out a few more herbs to get growing in this garden. And I need to find, well, I'll just use my knife to trim those down. Need to trim this though. Give that parsley a better chance to survive. Need to trim this. Oh yeah. Gotta love fresh, fresh sage for turkey time. And hopefully this trimming will encourage the sage to push out a little bit. And that would be fantastic. Not bad. It's a start anyway. Mmm, that is some very aromatic sage. So while I'm moving things around and kind of setting up the uh, culinary herb aquaponic garden that is going to be this winter's focus, it occurs to me I should show you how well this oregano is doing. This came back in. Um, never really seen too many aphids or pests on oregano plants, so I felt it was safe enough to try this. And it looks to me like a lot of the flower heads drop their seeds right into the top here and I might just be getting a whole fresh flush of oregano seedlings coming up in this, uh, I think it's a two year old plant now. So, I'm kinda thinking I might try and transfer some of this back into the aquaponic garden. I've had mixed results with oregano in aquaponics in the past. And if I recall, I had some golden oregano in a no power aquaponic situation that did particularly well in the greenhouse but that's a very very humid environment and being no power it was more dry than wet which is uh, you know a condition some plants prefer and some plants really really don't so this aquaponic garden might work out better than the Dutch buckets that this was transplanted out of or it might not work out at all. Missed that one in my clipping. But there's really only one way to find out. Now I want to dig some of this up because I would like to get a bit of a root mass on here just to help give the oregano, well, a bit of an edge really. What do I have? <clears throat> I think the little blue shovel I usually use for this kind of stuff is still up in the uh, mud room with the rest of the normal gardening equipment so we're just going to try and a little plastic wedge thing here see if i can poke some out now i'm going to need to clean all the soil off of this before it goes into the aquaponic garden and uh, i'll probably show you that depending on how well this goes a couple fingers in here and oh, that's a, that's a nice little knotty sort of root mass. And all I got was roots. That is a determined little plant. We'll put this back to the side. 
So it goes back in there. There's a little one. It's got a tiny bit of roots on it, so we'll put this aside for now. Turns out this little potted plant's a little more stubborn than I had imagined. Which is fantastic. That means it'll definitely survive this abuse. Good golly. Arr! Savage. All right. Gardening, not a game for the lighthearted. Let's clean this off. I don't want all that in my system now that I've just gotten the fish water cleared back up and somehow I think that'll fill back in. One tiny little uh, surviving oregano cutting that went from the old aquaponic garden into here and eventually produced all that. So put this to the side. All right, and here you can see I've just rinsed the roots off kind of roughly. I'm not shooting for perfect here. And I've got all the soil that was in there down in a bucket. I'm going to use that to water my house plants, all the spider plants and such. Keep these lava rocks to the side. Got our little oregano cutting here. You know what? I might take this up for an arrow garden. See how it does upstairs because I want some herbs growing with them peppers. And then, again, transplanting into aquaponics. It's fairly easy, but apparently I need to adjust the camera. That's a better view. Just take those roots and wiggle them in there nice and deep. Make sure they're below where the water level is. When it overflows, and with those roots on there, I'm thinking there's a pretty safe bet we can now add oregano to my kitchen herb garden. This is fantastic. All right, parsley, sage, oregano. Guess I need some rosemary and thyme in this at some point. I'll have to check my seeds. Maybe we'll get doing that next week. But uh, who knows? I might get it done before then. We'll see. So what are we looking at today then for our final result? We've got two different types of sage. Parsley, so that's three. Oregano makes four. Mint makes five. And strawberries make six different varieties of things. Now going in this aquaponic garden. I mean, you could be a stickler and say tricolor sage and regular sage, or, you know, they're both sage, but I'm calling it six for now. I'd like to get somewhere between eight and 12 different things growing in this and uh, hopefully, you know, have a nice productive winter herb garden. Cue furnace. All right, and the furnace says it's probably time for me to wrap this up for today anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this little I don't know, visit in the basement fiddling around with the aquaponics. Like I said, if you're you know newer to the channel or even an older viewer and you have any specific questions about aquaponics you'd like me to answer, either in a comment or with a video that kind of better describes it, please by all means throw that into the comments below. I'd be more than happy to help you out with that. I do have uh, a surprising amount of experience putting these systems together as I kind of realized last week because I really didn't have to think about it, I just did it. <laughs> So that's, that's just that. Um, yeah, we might be going into a few explanatory videos in the future, kind of discussing what I learned from the aquaponic basement garden last year, uh, discussing kind of the restrictions that the basement gives me on that, and my overall opinion on aquaponic gardening in general, which ultimately hasn't changed that much, but it has become slightly more educated so yeah stick around if aquaponics is something you're interested in if indoor gardening is something you're interested in growing under leds growing peppers i do a lot of strange stuff on this channel but mostly it's food related so yeah stick around if you're interested in gardening and stuff plus all that standard youtuber don't forget to like share subscribe blah 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 put it on 15 million social medias and have yourself a fantastic day no but seriously um definitely coming up next couple of days i want to talk about the uh, clip and flip harvest versus the uh what we'll call it bin style harvest of the peppers and kind of why I think everybody needs to uh, consider clip and flip as a really viable way to ripen up your leftover peppers. All right, folks, I will see you next time. Take care until then, because I don't know about you, but we got snow to deal with. So yes, drive safe, garden safe, play safe, all that fun stuff. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Much love, everybody.